Where is the reasoning for this sort of corruption? Why do you crowd out and not honor the right to life of others of God's sacred kingdom, such as the trees, the minerals, and the animals? What have you chosen with your gift of free will? Most of the mass consciousness of humanity have chosen death and destruction to themselves and the planet, because they believe and are blinded by the lies of the Antichrist. They are possessed by the blindness and ignorance of their own altered ego. So, now that you recognize that most ones have chosen, with their wondrous free will, not to maintain the balance of the laws of God and the creation, you might ask yourself, so what happens now? There is a point which is reached, when God must decide, whether he will preserve and return balance to a kingdom of his that is lost in the darkness and ignorance of the Antichrist, or, whether he will allow the Antichrist to consume itself and the planet it is sustained by. We will give you the example of this kingdom of God, beloved planet Earth. She is called the Emerald of this universe, she is a most glorious creation and she is alive, a being of God's love. She is a part of the human experience, and the human experience is a part of her. All of the pollution of the thoughts, words and deeds from the humans here is now a part of her, as well as existing within the humans who created them. She has been raped, pillaged and plundered by those who were to be her guardians. She has allowed you to make her your playground of hell and she has cried out to God for help and mercy. As have many of you who now know your only hope will come from the loving grace and mercy of our Divine Father. And God has answered her plea in his infinite love, compassion and mercy. The promise, she will be allowed to cleanse herself from within and without of all the Antichrist pollution smothering her. She will be rebirthed into a crested being of perfection. And so too, the humans who choose to align in balance with the laws of God and the creation will also receive graduation into the kingdom of God in the higher dimensions of life within the divine creation. None will be spared the ultimate choice between the kingdom of light and love that is God's kingdom, or to remain in the kingdom of the Antichrist, which is the desolate, hollow darkness of lies, deception and destruction. What we are describing to you is that you each now have the opportunity to move your soul awareness from unconscious, current third dimensional experience, to conscious, new God fourth and fifth dimensional experience, immortality. Meditate on the meaning of that statement of truth. May you wisely choose the glorious freedom of the conscious immortality of God, truth, love and light. 2. You shall not make for yourselves idols and false images to worship, as gods for therein you give power into the hands of evil. This means, that there is nothing in material manifestation, for you to worship as your God. There are no temples or churches, deities or crosses that need be the places or images to worship in or of. Nor are there any priests, ministers, rabbis or any other human who may act as representatives between you and God. You see, each and every one of you human beings carries with you the temple of God within you. You are the temple. And so with this truth in mind you might ask yourselves, where do you take God in your life journey? So you must not place the attainment and hoarding of worldly treasures above the attainment of your spiritual wisdom and perfection, lest ye die in the darkness of spiritual poverty. A good example of this false image of worship is quite prevalent now in your societies and that is the worship of gold. If you make the accumulation of gold, money, your first preoccupation for the sake of having more and better things and possessions, you are pushing God out of his temple and the Antichrist will become your constant bedfellow, urging you to consider only your material desires, promising you greatness and importance above your brothers, so that eventually God within you becomes but a glimmer of what was once the flame of your eternal God empowerment within. And if you allow your altered ego possession by the Antichrist to rule your being, the Antichrist will not stop until your flame of life is extinguished and your spirit is left alone and naked to stand before self and God in the agony of self-judgment of the transgressions against his holy presence. So this means that you must become and remain detached from your worldly possessions, because they do not go with you to the kingdom of God, nor does the amassing of great worldly treasures bring you spiritual wisdom. Your preoccupation with amassing great worldly wealth brings you only the emptiness of spiritual poverty. You cannot serve your spirit and serve the Antichrist. Serve only your spirit within and the Antichrist will have no place to dwell within your temple. 3. You shall love the Lord God with all your heart, soul and being, you must love then a self as God and God as self. 
This means, that within the Christ circle of infinity, which is the Christ consciousness of one, you must recognize the tremendous and wondrous love that our Lord God has, for you to allow your experience in his kingdom of life unfolding. You and all that is are but the reflection of his love and joy of the creation before him. You are his co-creator in the infinity of the creation and you are the co-creator of his jubilant self-discovery within the unfolding manifestations of the mystery of the Eternal One. So, when you despise yourself or another, you despise the very spirit of life eternal and it all exists within you. You see, our great central sun, the one eternal light is beckoning to you, I am the light, I am the joy, I am the love, I am the truth, I am the adventure, I am that I am. And so are you. Your ticket to the eternity that I am is your love of the Holy Spirit of life within self and all that is. Also remember, that in your physical world, you have a physical body which you are given to use to house your spirit of God within. You must take care of the needs of the body with proper food, water, clothing, shelter, exercise and rest, so that you remain vibrant, clean and healthy in order to perform, with honor, the service of God. So too, you must not knowingly poison the body with the ingestion or inhalation of devastatingly harmful and addictive drugs, whether they be of legal or illegal status by earth standards. The spirit of God within you needs no mind altering to connect and commune with the highest divine light of the one all that is. For, you shall not use the name of God irreverently, nor use of it to swear to a falsehood. This means you shall not cast blame against or curse another in the name of the Father in your thoughts, words or deeds. You must take full responsibility for your own errors or transgressions against self or others. And so, when you blame, curse, resent and condemn another being you are also blaming, cursing, resenting and condemning God your Creator, who exists as the flame of immortal life within you and within all others. So, as you cast outward the blame of irresponsibility and denial, it must return to you until the lesson is learned by you who is the creator of the transgression in the first place upon the oneself. Also, you must not knowingly and purposely deceive or lie to yourself or others in the name of your Holy Father. So, when you say, I swear this to be the total truth in the name of God, you had better know, that to be a factual statement or you have dishonored God's sacred name for your own selfish altered ego means. This does not mean, that with the tyranny that exists with the injustice systems of the world, that you must sacrifice your life for the telling of a truth in a court of the unlawful. In this case, as in all situations you encounter, you must use your God-given senses and ask for His guidance and protection in your circumstance. This in no way means you will not tell the truth, as you perceive it to be, but you must trust the power of God within you to always give you what you need for guidance and protection. This is what Emmanuel told the Pharisees and scribes about oaths. Woe unto you, you blind leaders of false teachings who say, if a person swears by the temple, that does not count, but if a person swears by the gold on the temple, that binds him. You fools and blinded ones, you are the offspring of evil, why do you let people swear knowing, that an oath is not binding and is a worthless act? How can you say that, if a person swears through sacrifice, that is binding? You blind and false teachers, who gave you the right to demand an oath or to swear, since the laws of the creation state that oaths should not be given. Your speech should always be yes, or, no. Therefore he who swears by anything on earth or the universe, swears by something fleeting, which is without any substance and therefore, an oath is of no substance either. Therefore, he who swears by anything commits a crime with respect to the truth of his word and makes it doubtful. Isn't it interesting that in a court of law, ones are required to hold the false Bible and swear an oath of truth to the court? Where do you suppose that requirement came from? Perhaps from Freemasonry. It is important to remember, that ignorance of the truth is acceptable for a time, but remember God within you will give you many opportunities to turn your ignorance into the wisdom of knowledge of truth. And if you are truly a servant to the one all that is, you will always welcome the light of truth to shine within and before you, even if you find the truth to be abhorrent within your very being. This means, that you cannot hide behind the blind ignorance which rules you by fear and denial of responsibility. This is not acceptable ignorance in God's kingdom, because you thereby become the servant of the Antichrist and have therefore given your life into the hands of evil. Here is an example of an acceptable ignorance, this false belief applies to many who consider themselves part of the so-called New Age movement. Ones are given the wisdom of truth that says yes, you are God and so you create your own reality. 
many ones have falsely interpreted that to mean, I can now ignore the reality I have already contributed to the creation of and it will no longer be my responsibility, because I am God.